I bet you can hear me on the video. <laughs> All right, so. I have a theory of progressing. I don't think you need to be Make sure you come to the game tonight, number 12, you'll see me. And it's a little like you and it's terrible. All right, guys, we need to get started. Um, we're going to talk about more regression equations today. We did power regressions yesterday. We're going to kind of look at some of the other regressions that the calculator does. And there's some added ass assignment to page whatever that is, 104. Um, real quick, we just kind of rushed through the end of yesterday's lesson, as you recall. I picked a few questions out of the book that weren't assigned to go through just to make sure you're ready for this part of the lesson what we covered yesterday okay so here goes end behavior what do we need to know to determine the end behavior without using our calculator the degree good call what's the degree okay hang on having issues with here we go okay so this one is in standard form and the degree is seven the leading coefficient is Negative 5, or all we really care about is it's negative. So generally, any odd thing is doing this shape, but when it's negative, it's this way. So then you would need to write the end behavior, right? As x approaches negative infinity, y is going up. As x approaches infinity, y is going down. We good? All right, what about number 14? Yeah, I picked this one because I thought it was going to have both ends going the same direction and then I realized it's not in standard form right so this is degree five with a positive leading coefficient so what's different than this and behavior anybody yeah it's <coughs> down on the left right because it's not flipped so if it had been an x to the fourth with a positive leading coefficient, then what? Yeah, both ends up. Good call. All right, so we understand even odd in regards to degree and end behavior. All right, the second thing we talked about yesterday was turning points and zeros. So what helps us determine the number of possible zeros? Yep, the zeros again the degree again so this has it a maximum of six possible real zeros there could be less all right and how do we find number of turning points yep degree minus one so that would be five then it says determine all the real zeros by factoring can you help me factor this one what do we want to do first which would leave Uh, what do you think? Does that work? So the zeros would be at... <coughs> 6 and 2, but also 0, right? Because we took out this? Yes. Yes, let me explain why real quick. It's anything that is being multiplied together has to be any one of those pieces could equal zero. So x to the fourth could equal zero, which would make x zero. x minus six could equal zero, or x minus two could equal zero. Now, if there'd been a constant out here, like a four x to the fourth, <coughs> it would be four x to the fourth equals zero, so it would still just be zero, okay? Um, before I move on, what is, the word multiplicity have to do with this question? This 6 is a 0 of multiplicity 1, 2 is a 0 of multiplicity 1, but 4 is a 0 of multiplicity, or I'm sorry, 0 is a 0 of multiplicity 4. Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Okay. So the last part of the lesson yesterday kind of went over our heads. The multiplicity means the degree here, the degree on the zero, okay? It has to do then with the fact that if I were to graph this, this would have 
as 0 at 0, 2, and 6, but at 0, because it's multiplicity 4, remember it doesn't cross, it bounces, it has an even multiplicity. So this is a total degree of what? So end behavior is, show me with your hands, end behavior is both ends up, right? Okay. So at, at 0, it would bounce. And then at 2, it would cross, and at 4, it would cross. Yeah. Okay. All right. That wasn't part of this question, but it is part of this question. These are factored, so it's harder to tell the leading term. Yes. If it has even multiplicity. Okay. Even multiplicity is a bounce. Any kind of odd multiplicity means it crosses. All right, this is hard to tell what's going on for our leading coefficient because it's factored, but it's much nicer to tell the zeros when it's factored. If I were to square this, the first term would turn out to just be an x squared. Everybody all right with that part? There's a 2x out front. Then I would have an x squared. This, if there's no squared on it, so I just have an x. So if I were to FOIL that out, I'd have a 2x to the fourth if I were to mess this all up and get it in standard form. Everybody okay? So the degree is 4 in the leading coefficient is positive. What does that tell me? Both ends are up. Okay. B says determine the zeros. Can you tell me the zeros? and their multiplicity. So here, 0, and that has no multiplicity other than 1, okay? Negative 5, but what's the multiplicity up here? And then 3 of just multiplicity 1. It, has, it doesn't have a squared. So, it says find a few additional points and you do not have to do that. You have a graphing calculator if you really want to look at it. But when it says D, a rough sketch, all I want you to do is say it crosses at 0, it crosses at negative 5, it crosses at positive 3. Both ends are up, so it comes from up here. Okay, what does it do at negative 5? Because of the multiplicity, it bounces. Okay, it doesn't actually cross. It's tangent to. Then at 0 and 3, there's no multiplicity other than 1, so it crosses. Now, I would not know the shape if I didn't know the end behavior, right? But I also would not know the shape if I didn't know whether it bounced or crossed. I wouldn't get the intercept or the shapes right. All right, 38. Let's see if we can do one more of these. I don't have room, so I'm going to take a picture here. All right, guys, leading coefficient, what would it be? Do you know what would happen if I took that? If I squared this, I'd have an x squared, right? If I squared this one, I'd also have an x squared. And out in front, there was a negative. So the leading coefficient would, I don't know where I got a 4, sorry. Negative x to the 4th, that's messy. So what does that mean? Okay, both ends are down. Everybody okay? All right, what was part B? Do you remember? I forgot. Zeros and multiplicity and then graph. Okay, zeros and multiplicity. Where are the zeros at? <coughs> okay, negative 2 and 4 are zeros. But the multiplicity of each is 2. <coughs> what does that mean it's going to do with those two zeros? Okay, so this entire graph is where? Yeah, it's all below the x-axis because this is the shape.
but it does a bounce at negative 2 and a bounce at positive 4. So it comes from down here, bounces, bounces. I have no idea how far down this in here goes. In the days before graphing calculators, this is how I had to graph this. And then if I wanted to know what was going on in here, I had to put in a 0, a 1, a 2, a 3, and figure out some more points. You guys have a graphing calculator, and it would be a waste of time to by hand put all those points in, okay? But remember, part of the SAT is no calculator. I don't know that they get this in-depth with the algebra on the SAT, but they certainly could ask a question about end behavior or which is an appropriate graph, okay? All right, we're going to move on to today's lesson. You got your graphing calculators? <coughs> yes. <coughs> All right. <coughs> you can go get a drink. Okay. Um, we, I have three examples on here. Do you want to do all three? Yes. No. Okay. So let's go ahead and type this in. Do you remember how you get there? Stat, enter. Okay, so at some point you're going to want to clear out your y equals if you have anything in there. And then you want to type this data in to list 1 and list 2. And I'm a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. I already did it last night to try and get a head start on this. So I have them in list one and list two, right? Everybody have the numbers in? <coughs> what? That, that's, it's not worth deleting. Here, we'll just use, I'll show you how to do list three and list four, Blake, and then you can go back. All right, guys, are we ready? Yes. It wants us to look at the stat plot because we're supposed to look at the <laughs> scatter plot first and then determine which regression we want to use. Does this look like a power regression? Does it look like a parabola? Does it look like a cubic? Does it look like a line? Okay. So we are going to turn the stat plot on. Second y equals. This, why won't this let me move this? There we go. Enter, enter, make sure it's on stat plot, list one and list two. If you put your data somewhere else, this is where you could change what you're looking at to like list three and list four <coughs> if you didn't have a list one and list two. <coughs> All right. Go to y equals, make sure you don't have an equation in, and then we always, always, always have to do what? When we want to look at the graph, we need to set up a window, which means that we want to just do a zoom nine, zoom stat. Yep. Sorry, didn't hear. Okay. So does it look like the picture here on your worksheet? Everybody okay? Nobody got crazy business? Okay. People ask, power functions can be lots of different shapes, okay? But the thing with a power function is it goes through the origin. This is clearly not a power function. We're going to go with the parabola. Does that seem okay? But what regression is that going to be? <coughs> It's not called a parabola e equation, it's called a quadratic equation. So we're going to go stat, right arrow, yes, number five is the quadratic regression. And then it's the same as 
every other thing kind of regression equation we've done you want to store it so mine has the older operating system so I'm going to go L1 comma L2 comma then the VARS key arrow to the right enter to put it in Y1 okay two things <laughs> did you get the equation and get it stored and do you have this R squared? Anybody not have the R squared? Everybody's diagnostics are turned on? Okay. If it wasn't, you would go to second zero, scroll down and find where it says diagnostic on, and you'd hit enter like twice until it said done, and then you just have to repeat this process where you go stat, right arrow, whatever. All right. So the question on your paper says, we use the quad regression tool. We came up with an equation. I think I cheated. Is this the equation you got, guys? Yeah. I went ahead and put a picture on here so we could do this quickly. Um, they want us to write the equation, and it says round to the nearest thousandth. How many places is that? Ten hundred thousandths, so three. So we're going to go negative 0 0.409 x squared plus, everybody with me, we're putting the letters A, B, and C into this equation up here. So then B is 2.762x plus C is 16.267 if I round. The correlation coefficient is about 0.99. I'm not super knowledgeable about this correlation coefficient in when it's not linear. I'm just going with whatever's at the bottom of this list is what we're going to use for the correlation coefficient, okay? This one's R squared, not R, but I'm going with it. All right, use the model to predict the flow in 10.5 hours. You could put the 10.5 in here, and I would count it right. But remember yesterday we talked about the book wants us to use the stored equation with all the <laughs> decimal places? So how did we do that? We made sure it was stored, so I'm going to look in my y equals, it is stored. Then we went stat window, made sure it said ask auto. Everybody okay? Then stat graph to the table. And what are we putting in, 10.5? Okay. 10.5, enter. And I got 0.16985, anybody? Okay, I don't, I'm not sure what we're doing here. What the, what was the question asking? I don't know what I just did. Ah, move, go away. Um, <coughs> tell me again. Point. What did we get? I forgot. Okay, so about point one seven. Can I just go with that? Flow rate will be about, I, I gotta go back to the previous question. Oh, this was hundreds of liters per hour. That's what's trying to trick us here. So this is 0.17 hundreds. What does that mean, guys? It means multiply it by 100, which would be 17 liters per hour. <coughs> Does it make any sense? What did we put in? 10.5? Oh, these were 100. So this would have been 1,800 and so on if we multiplied by the 100. So at 10.5, it was going back down, so it would have been way small. That's where we got the 0 0.17. All right. Did we finish the question? Oh, use the model to determine the approximate time when the flow rate was 1,000. Be careful. Remember, it was in hundreds, so we would divide by 100 and get 10. And then they want us to figure out when it hit exactly 10. So we're going to put a y equals 10 line in. 
I'm going to put it in y2 because I don't want to get rid of my equation. I'm going to line in at y equals 10 and go back to my graph. And then I need the intersection. Hawkins all over this. Anybody having trouble getting the intersection? You have a stat plot turned on, and sometimes that can interfere with finding an intersection point. Anybody? That's all working? So I got like 8.5, <coughs> so like eight and a half hours. Did everybody get that? All right. I think the biggest struggle for some of you is going to be picking which regression equation. Okay? This one was pretty clearly a parabola. So we're okay? <coughs> All right. This says the further, example two says, the further a planet is from the sun, the longer it takes to complete an orbit. So here's Earth right here, right? We're third from the sun, 365 days to complete an orbit. So you're going to use a graphing calculator and put all these in and determine what the model looks like. Can you do that quick? I'm a real cheater. I use my second calculator to put these in. <laughs> trying to figure out how to save time because it takes me so much longer than you guys to type them in. Yes. Okay, so go up onto the title of whatever's your furthest <coughs> left and do second delete. And now you need to name it. So go second one or second two and name it L1 and L2. Do you need me to come? You got it? Yeah. All right, I think I have these in. Be careful, there's a lot of numbers here, and if you get a point out of whack, it messes everything up. I don't hear more buttons going, so you got them all typed in? What do we do next? Yeah, I'm going to go to y equals and make sure I don't have anything stored. Because you guys have something stored in your y equals, right? <coughs> Get rid of that. And then you always have to do a new window. So we do zoom 9. Okay? Did you get this? Almost, it almost looks like a linear equation would work, right? It almost looks like a straight line. Did you get a little bit of a curve to it, though? If you're not getting that picture. Oh, you're okay. Everybody okay? No? How can you need help? Okay. It, I think a, par a parabola equation would probably do okay for this. It would be a very similar result. I use the power regression because it does look like it's going through zero, zero. Pretty close, right? So if it doesn't specify in the book and there's two options, we'll figure out you can go with either one, okay? But do you remember how to do the power regression? Stat, right arrow. Okay, alpha A, if you remember that much, I wouldn't have remembered. <laughs> I'd have just kept scrolling down. It is A, so power regression. List one, list two, store. Can you just make this thing bigger? No, just kidding. I didn't mean to do that. Just kidding. <coughs> Where 
is A. I can't even do alpha A because I can't find it. All right. Did y'all store it? I can't. Okay. Vars, arrow to the right. It's a good thing I put all this in here like I knew what I was doing ahead of time because I can't even remember, keep up now. It's thinking. Did you get that? Yeah. 367.3 X to the 1.5? Go, go back and proofread your list in L1 and L2. All right, so it says round to the nearest thousandth again. I already forgot. Oh, it's down at the bottom. Good for me. I put it down there. 367.323. Would that be it, guys? Yes. Times x to the b, which is 1.501. It's y equals a x to the b. Yep. You got to look at the little example down here to see how to write it. The correlation coefficient, I'm going with the one at the bottom, so it's like 0 0.999989, whatever, I don't care. All right, it's a good fit anyway. If I go back to my calculator, I could go to graph to see the good fit. That would make me happy, right? And I have my color one going, so you can see it's blue. <coughs> Then we need, what else does it ask? Guys, does it ask more questions about this? Is that it? Oh, okay. So if we discovered a new planet in between Earth and Mars, we could, in theory, figure out how long its orbit would be, right? If we put in some kind of, okay. Moving on. Um, this says the amount, example three, the amount of food energy produced by farms increases as more energy is expended. The following table shows the amount of energy produced and the amount of energy expended to produce the food. Graph the scatter plot and decide on a regression to use. Okay, type these in real quick. Yeah, Hoffbauer cheated again and put them in list three and four. It's not really cheating. I just put them in so that they were already there. Clear out your y equals. And do your zoom stat. I, because I put mine in list four, have to go here and change it to say list three and list four, but you don't have to do that. Does it look like that? Okay. Do you see why I kind of went with a cubic, though? Because it kind of had a uh, little kink to it. A power or a quadratic, I think, would have not gone through these dots here in the middle. It would have just kind of skipped past how it went down and then back up. Any questions? Can we move on and do the regression? Okay, stat, right arrow, which one did I pick? Cubic, which is choice six. <coughs> now, you do the same thing, L1, comma, L2, comma, Y1. I use different lists, so I'm going to do it a little bit different. Because I didn't want to delete my old data because I need to use it again for next class.
I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, it's disgusting. Oh, that's actually really tiny, right? Ooh. Yuck. Yeah, I didn't realize that when I wrote it. Okay, so we can either leave it in scientific notation or put a whole bunch of dots. Um, I want to look at the graph, though, because I want to see how nice or not nice this is. Oh, it's kind of kind of nice. What do you think? Looks like it's hitting most of the dots. The issue for me would be whether or not, see how at the end it really drops down? Does it really going to do that or not? Is it really a good fit? So we don't really know. Um, but to write this down, yeah, let's go back to that crazy screen. It's, here, I'm going to get rid of this. I've made a copy. This is This is it, right? Well, the problem is if we rounded to the nearest thousandth, this would be zero, right? Because it's negative point zero, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three. So it would be zero if we rounded, but that's going to change things totally. That's why we store it so we don't have to worry about it but yeah you could write three point negative three point nine times ten to the negative eighth I don't care and then this would be point zero 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 one five or something x squared plus or minus Minus 0.136, if I go three places, x plus 167. I'm out of room, so I'm going with that. Okay, predict when the output is 800 calories. Eight, oh. The energy output of 800 calories, though, is a what? It's a, it's a y value, yes? So we need to put in y equals 800. So then what do we do? Yeah, we graph y equals 800 and find the intersection point. Does it fit in the window? Okay, what is my current window? Oh, it's not ever going to hit 800 for an output. Are we doing something crazy? Maybe. Wait, I'm not reading this. Guys, somebody read this for me. Look what it says. Predict the output when the input is 800. Uh, so x equals 800. Yeah, someone's supposed to catch those mistakes before we spend five minutes being crazy. Go to the table. Second, second graph, put in 800 and we get... <coughs> All right. Any questions? All right, can you please go to the back so we're on worksheet 4B? No, it was x equals 800. I read it wrong. Good? Yeah. No, we're only doing 1 and 4 together. Okay, guys. This is an important concept that is on both the test at the end of the chapter. There may be one on the quiz next Friday, and I know there's one on the final exam. You have to come up with the equation given the graph. We've talked about this. We've done them over and over, right? They're just polynomials now, not parabolas or absolute values or what did we do last week? We even did some square roots and yeah. All right.
This has zeros where? It's negative 2, and then it says negative 4 thirds, right? And positive 1 thirds? When you write that down, make sure it makes sense for the end behavior. Does that make sense for the end behavior that there could be three zeros? Are there, is there any multiplicity that's even? Like it's, are, is it bouncing at any of those zeros? Is it bouncing at any of those zeros? It crosses at all of them, right? Okay. Shh, guys, we need to write these as factors. How would I write that as a factor? I'm going to be lazy and write x plus 4 thirds and x minus 1 third. And I'll talk about the other way to do it in a second, okay? These were the zeros, and these are the factors. Now, there is one more value given. It says it crosses the y-axis at 16. We can find the stretch vertically, the a value, by putting in 0, 16. So y is 16 when x is 0. I get 16 equals a times 2 times 4 thirds times negative 1 third, which is 16 equals a times negative 8 over 9. How would I solve that? Okay, so we're going to do 9 over negative 8, good job, and we get A equals negative 18. So one equation <laughs> that will work is negative 18 times x plus 2, x plus 4 thirds, x minus 1 third. You could type that in your calculator, and it should graph exactly like this and go through those points. Now, I want to point out something to you. This is the same factor as 3x plus 4. Yes? This is the same as 3x minus 1. If you did that, plus one, thank you. No, it was a positive one third. This would have a positive, so it's three X minus one. If you did this, we essentially multiplied this one by three and this one by three. So it would divide this, this would come out a negative two. How many of you see that that's equivalent? Negative two times X times three X times three X is the same as negative 18 times X times X times X. Okay, so there are different ways you could write these and still get them right. It's equivalent. All right, what's different about number four? It's got a whole bunch of zeros and it's got multiplicity. Can you tell what's going on here at negative three? <coughs> This is a bounce, so it has a multiplicity that's even. It doesn't cross at negative 3, but it has an x-intercept. All right, this is the one everybody forgets. I don't know why. They just, like, visually ignore the fact that it goes through what? Zero. So it has a 0 at 0. And then it has another 0, it says, at... 5 halves, which is doing a bounce, yes? So what degree are we looking at here? 
If it has a multiplicity 2, a multiplicity 2, and a multiplicity 1, that's a total of 5. Does this look like it could be a degree 5? Okay. A degree 5 means it would have at most how many turning points? 1, minimum, maximum, minimum, maximum. Does it have 4 turning points? Okay. So make sure all that ties together. What else do you know about the end behavior? Can you predict anything else? <coughs> if this is a degree 5, I'm thinking it's going to have a negative because it's it should come from below, right? And it's not. All right, let's write this out. How do I write out a do, minus 3? What's the factor? x plus 3, and what would make it bounce? Squared. The 0 here is just... You could write x minus 0 if it helps you understand it, but it's just an x, right? And then do you want me to just leave this one as 5 halves? And that one's squared. Okay. I cannot put in any point that is on the x-axis because there is no stretch there to find the stretch. So they gave me this point to use. So when I put in a 1, I should get out a negative 28.8. Isn't that a lovely number? So negative 28.8 equals A, and then i got to put a 1 in here, here, and here. So I have negative 28.8 equals A times 1, times 1 plus 3 would be 4 squared. What's 1 minus 5 halves, guys? I think it's negative 3 halves. Okay. Can you multiply all this together for me? 1 times 16 times 9 fourths. Thirty-six. Then what do we need to do? Divide negative twenty-eight point eight divided by thirty-six is negative point eight. So one equation would be to say negative point eight times x times x plus three squared times x minus five halves squared. That's not the only possible one because we could have written this factor differently. We could have written 2x minus 5. That would have been a whole different animal. All right, so your homework, guys, is to finish up all the 2.2 bookwork and to work at, finish up 4B. You have another homework check next week, Wednesday, so please get some of this done over the weekend.